Hey everybody, it's Scully. So I've had a day and a half today and I just kind of felt like making another video. Sometimes I get in these little moods, I just want to kind of capture it just to kind of, I don't know, sometimes it feels better. That way I can look at it later and maybe make sense of it or something. Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk about a topic that I felt was very important. I wanted to talk about um, self-image and self-esteem. Although those two terms are relatively similar, they are actually quite different, um, but they do overlap quite a bit. With self-image, it can um, not only be how you see yourself, but it can also be how other people see you, and it can be situational, and it can kind of change over time. Uh, self-esteem can change also, but that's kind of more how you feel about yourself. Like, you know, maybe like if you look in the mirror at yourself, like maybe how you feel or just, you know, how people feel about you and those kind of feelings. Now, there's a lot of kind of components that play into part with that. A lot of people tend to think appearance, which appearance is a big component. Because um, a lot of people um, with appearance, it can be their weight or it can be just, you know, how they do their hair, or their clothes, that kind of thing. But um, there's more to it than that, though, because there's also how you act, how you think, how you handle various situations, which can depend from one to the next. And you kind of see yourself problem solving, interacting with people and socializing, and that you kind of get that idea of how you see yourself, like, in those situations, like, if you think you handle them really well or not. And that can be along the lines of kind of personal habits and everything, too. So, um, we're all different in a lot of ways. Everybody comes in different shapes and sizes, appearance-wise. Everybody has different personalities, thought processes, or a lot of very different things that make you who you are, but a lot of them are very good things. Um, but of course, in society, there is a lot of pressure to act and behave a certain way, to look a certain way, to wear certain clothing. For various reasons, um, but a lot of them can have quite an effect on people in the long run. It's not uncommon to look at certain advertisements and magazines and see some attractive model holding some product or they look real fit and they have nice muscles or they their hair looks nice, things like that. And it's normal to kind of look at things like that and kind of look up to those people as they are role models, but um, for some people it can get to an unhealthy level. Not everybody, but for some people it can. And that can be very dangerous because um, if it comes to like an obsessive level, if you have somebody who really wants to look better, they can get involved in dangerous diets or substances that are like basically promising to help get them towards their goal. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to have goals, to have ambitions, especially if you like want to look better, lose weight, or any of that. But ultimately, your doctor is the person to talk to about that kind of stuff. Not some friend who said, this diet worked for me, it'll work for you too. Well, maybe it worked for them. Maybe it could work for you, maybe not. But ultimately, that can be very dangerous depending on what it is. And there are some diets that haven't been as regulated or kind of proven as ones that are healthier that your doctor might recommend or certain like maybe pills that people take that could have really horrible side effects and even be dangerous for your health. So that's why if you're ever looking at anything like that, it's very important to talk to your doctor about that stuff and be sure that stuff is healthy before you try it. And even if it is, you, I mean, depending on your medical history or any other medications that you could be taking could interact everybody's metabolism is different, their genetics are different, it can be different based on gender, height, weight, all that stuff. And you, you want to be sure it's something that's going to be healthy for you, not something detrimental. So if you're somebody who um, struggles with self-image and whether it's how you look or how you act or how you behave, just know that it's okay to be different from everybody else. You don't have to look the same as everybody else. You don't have to act the same as everybody else. You're allowed to have your own hobbies, your own personality traits, you're allowed to have your own hairstyle. You can be you in your own way. And if you want to better things about yourself, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. And you don't have to change just because people tell you to. If you honestly just want to be a better person and you want to, you know, achieve goals of maybe being more organized or being cleaner or something, that's perfectly fine. But do it for the right reasons and do it for you. And don't just do it because people tell you to. 
it's always good to want to be a better person and always try to see if you can improve on things. But if you're somebody who's constantly trying to improve things on yourself because you're not happy with who you are, well, I mean, you want to be comfortable in your own skin too. And there's ways to do that. I mean, when you look at some of these outfits people wear, again, not everybody comes in the same sizes. And you can find outfits that are unique to you, ones that fit you and make you feel who you are. And I know that fashion is one of those things that people tend to kind of roll their eyes about. But you'd actually be pretty amazed as to what you wear, what you eat. can actually can um, have a pretty big impact on how you feel as a person. Like certain foods that make you feel better. Just, you know, being healthy. Or if you were kind of you had the same fashion sense for a long time and then maybe kind of decided to kind of mix it up a little bit how suddenly you know you kind of learn more about yourself that way like how you feel when you look a certain way and if you're in situations that you know maybe you've had difficulty with before but you know you've worked harder to improve yourself and like you know be more organized for example or if you didn't like the fact that your house was messy and you decided to be cleaner and have better habits you can do kind of small things like that that are better for yourself. You don't have to always necessarily change everything about yourself. As I've gotten older, it's like, I don't know, you hear so many things about people changing. And, you know, again, we're all growing all the time. We're always, we're always adapting. But then you hear about the ones where people really try to change because they really aren't comfortable who they are. And it's just always a very sad story because everybody should be loved the way they are. And just because there's so much stigma about certain things, like certain clothing, certain hairstyles, and you know, everybody talks about that Karen cut. I mean, I mean don't worry about that. So if you're having, um, if you have self-image that you feel like you're not always happy with what you see and self-esteem, one of the things you should really always know is that, like I said, if you want to make change, it's okay, but really do it in a way that's healthy be mindful of who you talk to about certain dietary things, certain, like, oh, I tried this, you should try it too. You know, really kind of, like, if it's something dietary, I absolutely talk to your doctor for anything, and maybe he'll refer you to a dietitian to um, kind of modify your diet or any kind of exercise things. I mean, that's what those guys do. That's That's their, that's what they study. I mean, they're the guys to go to about that. Now, if you're talking more about kind of, um, like anything else, like obviously, you know, you can have people that recommend like hairstyles for you and stuff that can, or, that's pretty harmless for the most part. But if it's personality traits, I guess a lot of it is kind of, it just depends. Like if it's in a job setting and you want to, you know, you do your job pretty well, but if it's something that, you know, you could do your job better if you're like more organized, for example, you can always kind of like talk to somebody you work with, or if you have like a therapist that you talk to, they're very wonderful and they can help with a lot of things, not only um, with uh, interpersonal things like relationships or habits, um, but they can also help get to the root of maybe if you have certain issues, is it anxiety related? Is it something that's untreated? Is it something that can require maybe a little bit more investigating because sometimes there are some issues that are very complex and sometimes even things like diet can be that way too sometimes and it's worth kind of taking a closer look at to see if there's anything more than what meets the eye because people are very complicated and that doesn't have to be a bad thing but sometimes they take further investigation than what people think and then of course um like i said Comparing yourself to people in life is normal. We see people on TV all the time, hear about people all the time. That's completely normal to, oh, wow, I want to be like that person. They're so cool. But when you find yourself constantly comparing yourself to people in a bad way, and you don't really give yourself a lot of credit, that can kind of, that can be uh, very detrimental to your, your mental health. And you don't always see yourself in a positive light that you could, um, so focusing on some of the strengths that you have are very important. Um, sometimes it's, uh, when I, I used to take martial arts classes when I was younger and there's really like, you know, if your right hand was really strong, you wanted to eventually strengthen your left hand too to make it as strong as the right hand. But I had one person who actually told me, you know, sometimes instead of making the left hand as strong as the right one, keep making the right hand stronger because that's your strength. That's what you're good at, right? Everybody has weaknesses. Everybody 
has things that they're not good at, and that's okay. But one of the things you can kind of do if you if this is kind of something that you struggle with is knowing that if you know what your strengths are, I mean, obviously, if you don't know what your strengths are, it can take some time to kind of search for them because, you know, we're all complex people. We do a lot of things in life. But if you know what your strengths are, definitely keep sharpening those skills because they may be more useful than you think. And like, okay, well, maybe you're not as good as basketball as the next person, but if you're really good at writing, that's what you do best. And if you take that gift of yours and you really apply it, maybe you can be the best writer. You may not be the best basketball player because maybe that's not your strength, but you can be the best writer. And sometimes certain gifts you have like that, they can help you more in the long run than you think. It may seem like, oh, writing. Well, it depends on how you apply it. You can apply it to various jobs, various hobbies, or even in various maybe social situations. And somebody else could have that same talent and they could team up, they could work together. And before you know it, you have a friend and also another more kind of platinum status added to that strength that you have too. But self-esteem and like how you feel about yourself. It's very common to have times where you're on yourself. If it's like you're being your own personal coach that you want to get better but having, um, instead of always being the coach, it's always hard on yourself. There's kind of tough love where it's like you can kind of be hard on yourself, but you can also be like, hey, self, we did a really good job on that assignment today. But I bet if we work just a little bit harder, instead of it getting a C, we can get A or, we, or a B or we can, you know, we can do better on that next time. So basically giving yourself credit for the things you do well. But if you want to make improvements, being like, hey, we did a great job, but how about next time we do this? Just, just tweak that a little bit more and see what we can do next time and kind of make it like a good challenge for yourself instead. So if you're somebody struggling with that, just keep going and just keep sharpening your skills and you will be the best at what you can be because you do what you do better than anybody and nobody can change that. Always be yourself no matter what. Until then, have a great day, guys.